Painting a square. A good exercise in illusion and depth is a simple square. Allow time to see this through, and it's advisable to use a model with no hair on their back. Start by drawing the square on paper. Get familiar with seeing the inside of the square from different angles, left, right, and straight ahead. From top right, and from top left. When you're painting illusions, there are five basic questions. Where am I seeing it from? How deep is the hole? What is it lined with? Where is it lit from? And what is inside? All these questions will affect how you paint the piece. Take a look at the student's gallery for good examples of the possibilities. Draw a square the size that you want to put on the model's back on a piece of paper. Practice larger on a piece of paper. Work out where are you seeing it from. Here you're seeing it from bottom left. Work out how deep it is. Here I think it's about two and a half inches. Where is it lit from? And then what is inside? I just want to show you now how important the model's position is to what you're painting. Remember its skin, very, very soft, very malleable. And notice now when her arms go down that this line curves. So get your model comfortable and straight. Don't let them slouch. Don't have them draped over a chair because then when they straighten up, your square is going to be all over the place. Set up all that you'll need in advance. The paints, I'm using water and oil-based paints, powder, some straight pieces of card, a good selection of brushes, water, cotton buds, tissues, and sticky tape. For the large square, you have the option of making a stencil or cut some card to the required length. Decide your first question, where am I seeing it from? As I drew earlier, I'm seeing it from the bottom left. And I'm now starting to paint in my perspective. Notice I'm using a color that's not enormously contrasting to the model's skin. And check that both the distances are the same. I'm using my card now, I'm marking how wide I've made it and checking that it's the same above. And now I'm just going to adjust my line so that it really is equal. To make an illusion work, all your perspectives have to be equal and perfect. And this exercise is a really good way of working that out. So if my light is coming from the left, where's it going to hit? Start painting from the top so that you're not smudging it madly with your fingers. Here I'm using a half inch flat square ended brush. And the lines that I marked out really are the edge of my painting, so I'm going right up to them. Make sure that you get a good coverage.
make sure you get a good coverage and start to work at filling in the darkness and then starting to add the light. Keep it clean, keep your edges clean, keep your fingers clean. Because it's very, very easy to start making a mess. I tend to work from the mid-tones always and add the darkness or the light. I usually add the light last. Start with the mid-tones, add the shadows and then add the highlights. I'm sat very comfortably, just a little bit behind the model, slightly lower. It's very easy to get quite serious back problems as a body painter because quite often you are working on something for hours. So do be aware of your own position as well as your models. Here you're going to get to practice all the blending techniques that you learned at the beginning with the stripes. Remember the dry brush, remember the tissue, pulling the colour from underneath, dragging it down from above. And now I'm starting to pull in my highlights. This is the area where I think that the light will have hit my square. I'm seeing the square from bottom left and it's lit from top left. So I'm using quite a dry brush now to blend the colors together. It's important to take a step back at times as well, to get an overview of what it is you're doing. One can become very obsessed with an extraordinarily small area of someone's body. Get up, walk around, and do remember to invite your model to walk around, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest a deep stretch at this point, because the paint can crack. I'm using an oil-based paint here, to fill in my depth. And the reason for this is that it gives a much denser black that really doesn't catch the light, particularly if it's powdered with the black powder. It becomes a very, very solid black and it works very well for illusion, but it is messy. And so I'm going to show you some interesting techniques to protect your work. You can see that I've taped a line of sellotape and a tissue to the bottom of the work, perhaps a slightly novel approach to body painting, but you'll see later how marvelously helpful it is. First of all, it really helps me to get a straight line along the edge, but I haven't really done it for this part. Now that I have a good, dense black, Thank you. 
I'm just going to come back to my shading with the watercolour. Because once the black is in, it changes how the shadows work. And it's worth being open to adjusting and changing things. I'm going to add a reflective highlight in the top that would be the bounced light from the bottom corner. So I still haven't powdered the oil paint. The oil paint is still wet in the middle, and I'm being very, very careful not to touch it as I work. And now I'm going to give another edge, not because I am worried about the straightness of my outside edge, but because I really, really want to protect the skin from this awful black powder, which does do a beautiful job. But I'm going to make almost a little bag to protect her skin and to catch the excess powder from falling all over the floor. I'm also going to use a very, very straight edge to stop the black powder going all over my aqua color. So that's the very top of my inside edge. The aqua color is above and behind. So I'm using the sellotape and the cardboard to stop myself powdering my wet paint, but allowing me to really powder very, very beautifully and well the oil paint. And then taking a second piece of card on the outside edge against the aqua color again, against the water-based paint again, I'm going to protect my paint and it'll allow me to get a very straight, clean edge with the powdering. I once painted a jigsaw puzzle on somebody's back, this piece that everybody knows, this jigsaw puzzle with the piece missing. It took me hours to paint the jigsaw puzzle piece and when I'd finished and I filled in the black, I covered my work in black powder and I had to do it all over again, and the man had to stand there for about 11 hours, and he never spoke to me again, and it always taught me to really protect my work from the black powder. So now I'm brushing off the excess powder and allowing it to fall onto the tissues below. It's the straight line and the clean edges that make an illusion work. You'll see now how close one can get to that without an enormous amount of effort. If you were a real purist, you could work without the sellotape, without the tissues and without the card, but I think it would take probably about four times longer to get to this stage. And I'm now just cleaning up the final edges with tissues and cotton bud. And just adjusting where necessary the light and the shade And now look, look how the model's position affects your work. Arms up, palms down, sitting crooked, sitting straight. 